Hey y'all, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brianna and I just want to thank you for clicking on this video. So by the title you'll see that it is my labor and delivery story. And although I gave birth three months ago, it's quite interesting that I haven't heard a story similar like mine. So I thought it would be amazing for me to share with you guys. So I gave birth on October 17th, 2019. And my contraction started the day before, so October 16th, I believe it was a Wednesday. Um, I actually remember the night so clear because I, I ate, I think, curry chicken or curry goat around like 9, 10 o'clock. And then I was just, you know, doing what I normally do, trying to get ready for bed. Minus that I was already on my maternity leave, so I was just preparing for my baby to come because my expected due date was October 14th. So while I was just doing, you know, normal activities like on the phone, scrolling through Instagram, you know, um, around maybe, let me see, 12 midnight. So this is the next day. This is October 17th. I started getting contractions, but... I didn't make them a big deal because I didn't know if I was really, you know, in labor or contracting because one, my water, wait, my water didn't break and um, also, what is it? What else that you're indicating? Oh, my water didn't break and I was experiencing pregnancy prior to you know, my real contraction, so I wasn't sure if it was for real, if it, you know, if I should wait a little bit. So, since 12, 12 a.m. until about 1.30-ish, you know, I felt the contractions, they were regular, they were, you know, two to three minutes long. Um, and then from there, which is very personal, but I felt like I had to use the bathroom and you know me at night I usually use the bathroom at night with the lights off so I don't really turn them on but this time I turned the lights on and I realized that my mucus plug came out and there was a little bit of blood so from there I'm texting my boyfriend I'm texting my son's godmother and I'm like oh my god what what do I go to the hospital? Do I wait? Do I go to the hospital? And it was alarming because I had blood, you know, it was blood in the toilet. So I was afraid that something was going wrong. So now, now after I, you know, told my boyfriend and my son's godmother, you know, they're telling me to get ready. So now I'm quickly getting ready, you know preparing for whatever so i'm quickly getting ready and my son's godmother came to pick me up it was reaching around three in the mornings and then we got there at like 3 30 to the hospital um i did general paperwork which was upsetting to me because i submitted you know pre-registration or i'm not sure what it's called but they sent me a letter home to you know um fill out paperwork so when it's time to give birth that my information is in the system but my information was nowhere to be found so i had to sit and do the paperwork and then um i was admitted into like i don't really know what to call it because you're not admitted they pretty much watch you in order to determine to admit you it kind of give you like an emergency room style room like emergency style room where the curtains you know that's the only privacy you get is because of curtains you get out here you know everybody's talking whether inside your curtain inside your personal area which i mean or outside of the curtain so you know, all my paperwork is done. They call me, I get undressed, I get ready, you know, for them to evaluate me to see if I stay or I go. All right, here comes the interesting part, which I didn't know I developed until a little after. Basically, after I gave birth, I developed severe preeclampsia. And the crazy thing is, I had no blood pressure problems during my prenatal visits. 
I had nothing like I had no problems every visit was good normal nothing to worry about so the first indication to preeclampsia is high blood pressure and then I started to get a lot of I guess water retention because my feet and my ankles were swollen they were more swollen than the days prior to giving birth but what determined that was my high blood pressure and um, the protein in my urine was extremely high. They didn't explain the number to me, so this is why I didn't know the whole time until after I gave birth that I developed preeclampsia, severe preeclampsia, pretty much. So now, you know, I got checked to see how many centimeters I was. Um, I was like one, one and a half, but my water didn't break. Um, and let me tell you that when they checked me, it was painful. I don't understand why it was so painful, but it was so painful that I was, I feared for future cervical checks. Like I don't want nobody touching me in that way, which is crazy how painful it was. So um, after a little while, they still monitored my blood pressure. Um, and that's what determined for me to stay or at least get prepared to give birth labor time so they moved me into my personal room i was started on magnesium which is supposed to prevent seizures for those who have high blood pressure you know it's just to protect the mom and i must admit if you're put on magnesium you're not gonna feel good at all and it makes you feel like you got a flu. Like you came down with a cold. You feel all high or dizzy. Like you just, you don't feel yourself. And um, they start on magnesium as soon as possible. And I had to stay on magnesium a whole, I think eight hours after, a whole 24 hours after I gave birth. Like it was not good at all. And then from there, um, while I had the magnesium, I had the Pitocin, which helps you contract more, um, which I was contracting fine, but if I knew, um, if I knew that, then I would have never, I would have never agreed to the Pitocin because it was unnecessary because I was contracting on my own. Also, I had like very, very saline drops, so you know, to keep yourself hydrated during the time because all you can do is eat ice chips and they even say you don't drink, you can't drink water, but best believe I drink a little bit of water because it was unbearable. Like my throat was dry, you just so parched and also because of the magnesium that was making me so high, it was unbelievable. Like I needed some water, I needed to drink. Um, so from there, I got checked a few times. I reached up to five centimeters. Now, in the midst of it all, I did get an epidural. Um, that's something else I want to talk about in a different video. Just my overall experience. Like, I just want to give in a separate video of what I recommend and what I wish I did some did differently. Um, but that'll be in a separate video. So once I got checked a few times and I got to five centimeters pretty much, um, there was no progression from there. But prior to that, um, at 20 minutes on the Pitocin pretty much, you know, I'm hooked up to the machine, but the machine was behind me. So I wasn't really aware of like the numbers or how much contraction or how high or how intense it was. I was just myself and I felt fine. I was laying down and then out of nowhere, a bum rush of nurses came in, like putting oxygen masks, telling me to flip over. They popped my water bag. Like it was so much that I wanted to cry and it was very overwhelming because as I was experiencing that and the nurses were all around me, nobody was telling me what was going on with me or even with my baby. And so, that right there was so scary for me because I thought I would have to do an emergency C-section. That's what I felt like I was preparing for an emergency C-section. And, you know, in the beginning, that's something I really didn't want. But I happened to get 
at the end. So from there, I'm on the mask. I'm still hooked up to the magnesium. I'm still hooked up to, you know, saline drop, which is normal. Um, and I'm just feeling sick. I had to stay on my, my right side. My right side because my son's heart rate started to drop and he was actually going into distress. So they cut the Pitocin off. So that's why I was only on the magnesium and then the regular saline drop. So from there, I'm staying on one side and eventually my epidural kind of stops working. It was working prior to what was going on with his heart rate. It was working fine and I was laying on my back. As soon as they told me to stay on my right side for his heart rate to, you know, be fine or be at the level it should be, I believe, the side I was laying on, maybe the other side wasn't too sure, the epidural just stopped and I was feeling contractions. Like I was feeling my contractions. And on top of that, I still had the blood pressure cuff. So I was just, I was unable to be comfortable because the blood pressure cuff is monitoring me every, I think, 15 minutes. And so I couldn't, you know, lay on it because it's, it's ongoing. So that was annoying. And then I had to stay on one side. I had a mask, my, um, sorry, oxygen mask, which I don't know. The oxygen mask made me feel like I was on cloud nine. I was hallucinating. I like literally didn't really wear it on my face. Like I could have it up. Or even when a nurse or doctor came in, I put it back on my face like, yep, yeah, I'm wearing it. <laughs> But eventually I took it off because it was just making me feel even more sick. So now after all of that, me laying on my side, still getting my blood pressure um, monitored um, and my cervix checked at the five centimeter mark. Um, and after that, there was still no progression. So they checked it five centimeters and then after two, three hours, it was still the same, no progression. And I really thought that my son was gonna come in a matter of hours. Like the way I was um, opening up, dialing, like it was crazy. Like I thought my son was gonna come in like two minutes. <laughs> but after that, the doctor advised that I consider a C-section, which I'm gonna share also in the video that I said about my, you know, what, I would have done differently in a, in a separate video how I felt because I felt very pressured to do the c-section and that's because you know I was sitting there for so long you know so many people come in your face hourly um not even hourly, I feel like it's every 10 minutes someone's in your face and you really can't labor the way you want to comfortably, which is sad. So I felt like the only way, you know, this would be done is, you know, if I get a C-section. So, you know, I made the decision to get the C-section and I told the anesthesiologist that my epidural wasn't working. So pretty much that you know, I was feeling my contractions. So he gave me an extra dose. And then from there, you know, I waited and then I kind of stopped feeling my contractions. Then he told me that to not worry because they give you a larger dose or something stronger so that when you do get your cesarean that you don't feel nothing at all. It's not like having, you know, um, the medication, you know, just to numb the half of the bottom where you you, you still feel your contractions, but you don't feel the pain of it. You just feel the pressure. So I said, okay, because I'm still nervous. I, I feel like I, I needed to change my mind, but I know they were preparing the room for me. It was just very overwhelming. That decision itself was very overwhelming because from the beginning, I didn't want a C-section at all. And I also will explain why I didn't want to see a session in another video, but it was something I just didn't want and to have to make a decision, you know, to do so was very hard. 
And it also had to do with how I was feeling and the medications I was getting. I just felt completely drugged up. Like the mag uh, magnesium made you feel, just feel like you've been drugged. And I just wanted to get off of it as soon as possible. But to find out that I had to stay on it for another, I think, 8 or 24 hours. I don't remember from the time I gave birth, which, which was very annoying. But, you know, they're getting ready for the C-session. So they get in the room ready for me. You know, I'm getting ready, all this stuff. So, you know, I'm finally in the operating room. You know, you see all the lights, like you're about to get surgery, which it is surgery. And they, I was pretty much relaxed for the most part. I was still scared. It was, it was scary. Like, because I'm about to get surgery, they're about to cut me up. So it was so scary. And then from there, um, I remember the guy, the anesthesiologist, he told me that they would put a cold bottle on my lower half to make sure that I was numb completely. So he showed me the temperature of the bottle, like I think like on my shoulder or something like that, my hand, something like that on my arm, I'm not too sure. And the bottle was very cold, it was extremely cold. So they put it on my lower half and I didn't feel not a thing. I didn't feel no cold, I didn't feel nothing. So they proceeded with the cesarean. Now here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> and when I say interesting, I've never heard no story like mine. Um, they cut me. I didn't feel the cut now, but I felt everything after that, which was unbelievable. Like I felt all the pressure. I felt it was so unbearable that I wanted it to be done as soon as possible. I was crying. I also, while crying, I was shivering. Like I couldn't control my body movement. I just, I asked the, the guy, the anesthesia, I was, I was like, is he out, is he out? Cause I didn't hear anything, I didn't hear no crying. And then eventually I heard crying. And then I'm begging, like I'm begging them to hurry up because I'm telling him, I feel everything, I feel everything. Like I was in tears. And then he told me he was gonna give me something. Little do I know, I didn't. I don't even remember what he gave me to tell you guys. But let's just say I was put to sleep, and I don't remember anything after that. I don't remember nothing after that. I didn't see my baby until I got to the recovery room, which that's another another story there. So after I was woken up. They finished the C-section. I was still shivering cold, which is another thing the epidural can do to you is make you feel cold and shiver uncontrollably. Un when I mean uncontrollably, you can't control it no matter how many blankets, covers, I don't know, heat warmer, I don't know. And so uh, after a very few minutes, more than a few minutes, let me say 10 to 15 minutes till your body get back to normal. So I'm going to the recovery room and let me tell you this, the medication they gave me wore off. I don't know if they gave it to me, but I know I had to wait for pain management for at least 10 to 15 minutes and that's why I said that's how long it took for my body to stop shivering. I was crying, I felt my incision, I felt the cut, I felt like, you know, I felt everything like I was shivering and when I and I keep repeating that I was shivering because I was making my body so tense that it was affecting my cut and all the whole time I'm crying for pain medication and I just had to wait basically I had to wait until pain management that's what a nurse told me had to come and give me medicine through my epidural which was it was sad because like I didn't I didn't get to do skin to skin with my baby. I really didn't pay attention to him while he was right next to me. Like I was crying, like I just it was unbelievable. And 
honestly, like, it still hurts me today that I was unable to do skin to skin and I didn't have the, the delivery that I wanted. And honestly, I wish I could do everything all over, but I am blessed and I'm very happy that my son came into this world, very happy and healthy. He's gonna be three months on the 17th of January. So I'm just, I'm happy to be a mom, but my experience was very traumatic. And if I ever have children in the near future that I know better and will be more educated on, you know, the process of everything from the moment of conceiving and what is expected and what I should be doing to make sure that I have the birth that I desire and no complications. But up until the recovery area after the C-section, I stayed there until three in the morning because my son was born around 8 p.m. And they were still monitoring my blood pressure, which was every 15 minutes as well. And it was still high. I was put on medication to stabilize it, but it wasn't to eliminate it. So this medication was given to me every eight hours. So basically three times a day. And it was just only stabilizing it, making it, you know, normal. Um... And here comes another good part. So while in the recovery area, which is, I heard that this is a process after you give birth, either way, natural or C-section. But there was a nurse while my blood pressure cuff every 15 minutes would come in and she would press on my stomach. And when I tell you that pain was unbearable, I had to hold on to my boyfriend's hand. I had to hold on the rail. If he wasn't there, like, it was unbearable. Like, it was like, if you had the opportunity to scream, you would scream like someone's killing you. But I don't want the story to scare anyone. Just because I just haven't heard a story like mine. I don't know if I'm somebody with... You know, they talk about pain tolerance. I don't, I'm not too sure what mine is, low, high. Like, I thought in the beginning, because let me tell you this, that I was able to take the contractions. It's just that anyone who might have been talking to me just had to give me a minute. Like, let me go through my contractions. And I was fine. But from there, the way I felt my entire C-section, except for the cut, but just the pressure, everything from the moment of pulling, tugging. It was painful to the recovery t until I got pain medication, until pain management came in. It was, it wasn't a pleasant experience, but I don't want to scare any new moms. I don't want to scare, you know, those who are new moms, because, you know, every experience is different. And um, one experience might be greater than, you know, better than the other. Even if you're a new mom with multiple, I mean, you're not a new mom. You have multiple kids. But that's pretty much the end of my labor and delivery story. I will do, like I said, another video. What I recommend from my experience to new mothers um in a separate video but i want to thank you guys for watching this video please like and subscribe and i would love to hear your stories if you had a vaginal or a c-section i'm open to hear everyone's stories and i hope to see you in your next video well in my next video i'm so funny bye